Welcome to Paranormal Pages. Please drop a like or comment if you want to help the channel. Now let's get into the true scary stories. The Heartbeat in the Dark The house was old, the kind of old that felt alive. Every creak of its wooden frame seemed to shudder beneath unseen pressure, and the walls, painted a deep, faded maroon, felt like they had absorbed secrets from generations of inhabitants. But it wasn't the groaning wood or peeling wallpaper that bothered me the most, it was the closet. I first noticed it two nights after I moved in, the strange, rhythmic thumping. At first, I thought it was my own heartbeat, but then the sound echoed back in a slow, deliberate pulse, like a second heart, coming from the closet. I stood frozen at the edge of my bed, staring at the closed door, the silence between each beat crawling down my spine. It didn't stop. It never stopped. The pulse was always there, louder at night, subtle during the day, but always present. I hadn't dared to open the closet since the first night I unpacked. You're being ridiculous, I muttered, trying to convince myself as I stared at the door. But my mind wouldn't rest. Every night, it was the same routine, my eyes fixated on that handle, feeling the rhythmic thudding that somehow always managed to sink with my breath, as if mocking me. The first time I heard the whispering, I was half asleep. It was faint, like wind brushing through leaves, but it carried a sinister undertone that pried at the edge of my sanity. The whispers didn't form words, not at first, but I could feel them creeping under my skin, into my mind. Who's there? I'd ask into the darkness, hoping it was just a trick of the mind. The only response was the deep, relentless thudding of that heartbeat. Weeks went by, and the whispers became louder. Sometimes they came during the day. I'd be sitting on the couch, the afternoon light streaming through the stained windows, and from the closet, just at the edge of my hearing, I would catch the muffled sound of breathing, like someone, or something, was hiding, just waiting to be released. I tried to ignore it. Tried to drown it out with music, with television, even inviting friends over. But they didn't hear it. They couldn't hear it. I'd catch myself staring at the closet for hours, unable to pull my gaze away, convinced that if I looked away, the door would crack open just enough for whatever was inside to slip out. The worst part was the knowing. I could feel something watching me. Every night, as I lay beneath my blankets, listening to that heartbeat. I knew I wasn't alone. Then came the dreams. Dreams where I was in the room, standing by the closet door, with something just behind it, banging softly but relentlessly against the wood. In the dreams, the whispers became clearer, forming words that I didn't want to hear. Let me out, it said. I can hear you, too. I woke up drenched in sweat, my heart racing from the dream. It had been the same for days now, always that voice, always that same plea, let me out. I sat up in bed, the room heavy with silence, save for the ever-present thud of that heartbeat. The closet loomed in the shadows, its edges blurred by the faint moonlight filtering through the blinds. It stood there like a silent sentinel, waiting. Always waiting. I couldn't keep living like this, trapped in my own home by fear. I decided that night would be different. I would open the closet, confront whatever was inside, and put an end to the madness. Armed with nothing but a flashlight and the shaky remnants of my resolve, I approached the closet door. My fingers trembled as they reached for the handle, but just as I was about to turn it, the thumping grew louder, faster, as if whatever was inside could sense my approach. My breath hitched, and for a brief moment, I felt like the closet itself was alive, its wood vibrating with anticipation. No. I whispered to myself, pulling my hand back. Not tonight. I retreated to bed, wrapping myself in the covers as if they could protect me from the unseen. But sleep did not come easily. The heartbeat was louder than ever, pounding in my ears, mixing with the whispers that now formed a chorus of soft, taunting voices. And then, through the cacophony, one voice rose above the rest, clear and cold, you cannot ignore me forever. The next day. I decided to investigate the house's history. I needed to understand why this place, why this closet, felt so wrong. At the local library, the records told me what I feared, strange deaths, disappearances, rumors of hauntings. 
but there was one incident that stood out, a family, over 50 years ago, who had lived in the very room I now slept in. Their young son had disappeared without a trace, and though no one could explain it, neighbors had whispered of strange noises coming from the boy's closet in the nights leading up to his vanishing. That night, after poring over the documents, I returned home, the weight of dread pressing on my chest. The heartbeat in the closet pulsed more violently now, as if the very walls of the house were suffocating. I had to open the door. I had to know. I stood before it again, this time more determined. My hand reached for the knob, and as my fingers closed around the cold metal, a low growl came from inside. My body froze, every instinct screaming at me to run, but I couldn't. I was rooted to the spot, my hand refusing to let go. The growling turned into a rasping voice, low and guttural, I've been waiting, for you. I flung the door open. Nothing. The closet was empty, save for the darkness that seemed to stretch beyond its natural depth. My flashlight flickered as I stepped closer, shining into the void. That's when I saw them, two faint, glowing eyes staring back at me from the farthest corner, unblinking, waiting. And just as I felt a cold, bony hand brush against my ankle, the closet door slammed shut behind me. I screamed as I stumbled back, kicking my legs to free myself from whatever had touched me. My hands clawed at the door, but it wouldn't budge. The flashlight flickered and died, leaving me in the suffocating blackness of the closet. I could feel the presence behind me, those glowing eyes boring into my back. The heartbeat that had tormented me for weeks now thundered in my ears, as if it were inside my own skull. The air was thick and damp, smelling of decay and something far worse, something ancient. I pressed my back to the closet door, every muscle in my body tense, trying to block out the sound of heavy breathing that now surrounded me. This can't be real, I whispered, my voice shaking, as if speaking the words aloud would dispel the nightmare. But it was real. Too real. The voice came again, this time louder, closer. You open the door. Now you can't leave. The sound sent chills racing out my spine. My pulse quickened, and I could feel the thud of my own heart sinking with the oppressive heartbeat coming from all around me. I turned, slowly, and there in the shadows, the eyes floated toward me, no body, just those glowing orbs hovering in the blackness. I was frozen, unable to move or scream. Something cold and wet brushed my cheek, like a breath, and I recoiled in terror. You should have stayed away, the voice hissed, now unmistakably human but warped, distorted, as though it came from a throat that hadn't spoken in decades. You let me out, and now… Suddenly, the closet shifted. The walls seemed to stretch, the space behind me growing impossibly vast. I stumbled forward, and my hand shot out, reaching for the closet door, but the wood beneath my fingers felt soft, pulsing, like flesh. I jerked my hand back in horror, my mind struggling to make sense of what was happening. The heartbeat wasn't coming from something within the closet, it was the closet. The walls around me trembled as the whispers grew louder, swirling together in a violent chorus. I could hear them now, all the voices of those who had come before, trapped in the same darkness I now found myself in. My breathing came in ragged gasps as I realized the truth, they weren't just voices. They were souls, and they were trapped here, just like I was. A low chuckle echoed through the space. They all thought they could escape, the voice said, almost amused. But no one ever leaves. Not once the closet has claimed you. I was desperate now, clawing at the door, pounding on it with all my strength, but it was like beating against solid rock. There was no escape. The heartbeat grew louder, more erratic, and I felt a crushing pressure in my chest as though my own heart would explode. I had to get out. I had to. Then, just as my vision began to blur and the room tilted, the door creaked open. I tumbled out, gasping for air, my body soaked in sweat. The room was quiet, eerily still. The closet door hung open behind me, its interior shrouded in darkness, but the heartbeat, it was gone. I scrambled to my feet my entire body trembling, and stumbled toward the bedroom door, ready to flee. But as I reached for the handle, a slow, steady beat began again. Faint, but unmistakable. It was coming from inside my chest. 
I staggered out of the room, clutching my chest, feeling the thud of something alien beneath my skin. My heart should have been racing, but instead, the beat was slow and steady, too steady. Each pulse seemed to reverberate not just in my body, but in the very walls of the house. It was as though the house itself had swallowed me whole, and now, it controlled my heart. I made it to the hallway, but every step felt heavier, as if something was pulling me back toward the room, toward the closet. I heard the whispers again, fainter now, but still there, calling out from the dark. You can't leave, they taunted. You belong to us. My vision swam, my breaths coming in shallow gasps, and with every second, I felt the invisible chains tightening around me. I grabbed my phone, fumbling with it, desperate to call for help. But when I looked at the screen, my stomach dropped. It wasn't just the room that was watching me. My phone screen had dimmed, and there, in the reflection, I saw them, the eyes. Those same glowing, hungry eyes, staring back at me from the darkness behind. I spun around, but there was nothing, no glowing orbs, no body. Yet I could feel its presence. It was everywhere, seeping through the walls, through the air. My heartbeat slowed to match the pulse of the house, sinking with the rhythm I had heard for weeks. And then, I heard it, the rasping breath from the closet, growing louder, as though it had followed me out. I've always been here, the voice whispered. I'm in your blood now. I'm in your heart. I screamed, running down the stairs, stumbling as my legs buckled beneath the weight of something pressing down on me from inside. I could barely make it to the front door before collapsing, my hand trembling as it reached for the knob. But the door wouldn't open. The house wouldn't let me leave. Then, in the distance, I heard a faint knocking. It was coming from the walls. At first, I thought I was imagining it, but no, it was real, and it was getting closer, faster, like a heartbeat. My heartbeat. Each knock was a pulse, and each pulse was an echo of the thing inside me. With a surge of desperation, I yanked at the door again, and this time, it swung open. Cold night air rushed in, and for a moment, I thought I was free. But as I stumbled outside, I felt a tightness in my chest that stopped me in my tracks. My heart, the one inside me, wasn't beating anymore. Instead, I heard it thudding behind me, still inside the house. I looked back at the doorway, at the house standing silent and still under the moonlight. And that's when I saw it, my own reflection in the window, but it wasn't me. Those eyes, glowing softly, stared back at me. I realized, with a sinking horror, that I hadn't escaped at all. I was still in there. I could feel it, my heart, my soul, trapped in the walls of that house, pounding in time with the heartbeat. My body was just an empty shell, standing frozen outside, while the real me was locked inside, watching. Always watching. And then, slowly, the door creaked shut, sealing me in forever. Hey! Subscribe for more true scary stories. Story 2. The Book's Mirror. It started on a cold autumn evening, the kind where the sun dies too early and the wind carries a warning. I had no reason to pick up the book, no particular interest in strange tales or cryptic horror. Yet there it was, dusty and forgotten, nestled deep in the corner of a second-hand bookstore. The Mirror Chronicles it was called, bound in thick, cracked leather. I was never one to indulge in the macabre, but something about it called to me. The feeling of the book in my hands felt wrong, as though it had waited far too long for someone like me. I took it home, despite an unsettling tightness growing in my chest. By the time I was back in my apartment, the unease had turned into a full-blown itch beneath my skin. The walls felt too close, the silence too thick. Even my reflection in the mirror seemed distant, like I was only half there. Shaking off the sensation, I settled into my worn armchair and cracked open the first page. The story began innocuously enough. The main character, a woman named Marin, wandered through her life burdened by isolation, living a monotonous existence. But as I turned the pages, something eerie began to happen. Marin's thoughts, her actions, even the cadence of her speech, felt familiar. Too familiar. It wasn't just that her life was a mirror of mine, the way she thought, the patterns in her behavior, even her smallest fears, matched my own. 
By the time I reached the tenth page, Marin was sitting in her living room, picking up a book with trembling hands. Just like I was. She was reading about someone who looked just like her, someone who shared her habits, her life. I nearly dropped the book then. My breath caught in my throat, but I couldn't stop reading. I should have stopped. I needed to stop. Yet my fingers turned the pages on their own, as if bound by some invisible force. Strange, I murmured aloud, trying to shake off the growing sense of dread. This is just a coincidence. It has to be. My voice sounded too quiet in the stillness of the apartment. But then it wasn't just a matter of coincidence. The book's details grew more personal. Marin had a scar on her left hand from a kitchen accident years ago, just like mine. She kept an old photograph of her late mother in a worn, silver frame, the same one I had on my own desk. Every fiber of my being screamed at me to stop, to throw the book away. But I didn't. I couldn't. The last sentence I read that night chilled me to the bone, Marin knew it was no longer her choice. The book was reading her now. I slammed the book shut, heart pounding in my chest like it wanted out. The sound echoed through the empty room, too loud for the silence that followed. My hands were trembling, the scar on my left hand aching as if to remind me this wasn't some elaborate joke. This was real, too real. I tried to laugh it off, to tell myself it was some twisted trick of my imagination. But deep down, I knew the truth. The book was more than a story. It was something else. Something alive. I stood up, too jittery to stay seated, and crossed the room to the mirror on the wall. My reflection stared back, but it felt, off. As though it were waiting for something. I examined my face, the familiar lines and features I had seen a thousand times, but tonight they felt unfamiliar. My eyes lingered on the faint scar on my hand, tracing it lightly with my finger, the way Marin did in the story. The connection nodded me, sending a shiver down my spine. Maybe I was overthinking this. Maybe it was just a freak coincidence, some universal oddity. But the way the book knew, really knew, about my life was undeniable. My heartbeat slowed as I tried to rationalize. I could stop, right now. I could throw the book away, never look at it again. But a cold voice whispered in the back of my mind, would it let you? I snatched up my phone and called my best friend, Amy, needing to hear a voice other than my own. Hey, are you free right now? Something weird's happening, I blurted as soon as she answered, the words tumbling out before I could rein them in. What's going on? You sound like you've seen a ghost, she replied, her usual sarcastic tone softened by concern. I hesitated, knowing how insane it would sound. It's this book. It, it's like it knows everything about me. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's freaky. It's not just a story, Amy. It's like, it's describing me, in real time. There was a pause on the other end of the line, then a slight laugh. Oh come on, seriously? You're letting a book mess with your head? I'm not messing around. This isn't normal. I, I don't know what's happening, but it's creeping me out. Amy sighed. Look, I'll come over if you want, but I really think you need to chill. It's just a story, okay? The real world isn't that creepy. She was wrong. So wrong. The real world was this creepy and I was standing in the middle of it. Fine, I muttered. But hurry. I hung up the phone and turned back to the book, my pulse slowing as my curiosity grew stronger than my fear. I shouldn't have opened it again. But of course, I did. The next chapter was already there, waiting, like it had known I would return. And the first sentence was what shattered any last semblance of normalcy I was clinging to. Marin sat in her living room, waiting for her friend to arrive, knowing she shouldn't have called her. I dropped the book. My hands flew to my face, trying to steady the panic rising in my chest. How is this possible? It was more than just eerie coincidences now, it was predicting my life. No, dictating it. My heart pounded harder. I couldn't bear to touch it again. That's when I heard the knock at the door. The knock startled me, sharp and unexpected, slicing through the tension in the room. 
My eyes darted to the clock. Amy shouldn't have gotten here that fast. My heart thudded in my chest as I hesitated, staring at the door. The book had said she would arrive, but somehow, this knock didn't feel right. Amy? I called, my voice smaller than I intended, barely more than a whisper. There was no answer. I took a cautious step toward the door, my hands clammy. There was another knock, louder, more insistent this time. Whoever it was, they were getting impatient. I glanced back at the book lying face down on the floor. Was it possible that it knew what would happen next? What if it was controlling everything beyond just the pages? I didn't want to think about it, but I couldn't shake the feeling that opening the door might be exactly what it wanted me to do. My phone buzzed on the table. I grabbed it quickly, praying it was Amy telling me she was here and this was all some sort of coincidence. It wasn't. It was a text from her, but it only made things worse. Hey, stuck in traffic. Be there in 20. I froze, my eyes widening. The knock came again, this time harder, rattling the door on its hinges. It wasn't Amy. Then who, or what, was standing on the other side? My mind raced, and my instincts screamed at me not to open it. But then, as if compelled by some unseen force, my hand reached for the knob. Before I could even think to stop, I was turning it, my movements sluggish, as though my body wasn't fully under my control. The door creaked open, revealing nothing. There was no one there. The hallway outside my apartment was empty, bathed in the dull glow of the overhead lights. But the unease in the air only thickened. I glanced back down at the floor by my feet, where something had been left just outside the door, a small, plain envelope with no name, no markings. Just sitting there, waiting. My heart sank. Slowly, I bent down and picked it up, hands trembling as I tore it open. Inside was a single piece of paper, the handwriting elegant and precise, stop reading, or she dies. I gasped and stepped back, my heart thundering in my chest. My first thought was Amy. The book, had it known I would call her? Did it know I'd bring her into this? My hands shook as I clutched the note, my mind spinning with horror. My body felt cold, and the walls of my apartment seemed to close in around me, suffocating. Frantically, I rushed back to the book. It lay on the floor, its pages ruffling slightly as if caught in a breeze. But the windows were closed, and there was no draft. I didn't want to touch it, but I had no choice. I flipped it open again, my fingers trembling. Marin was still in her apartment, waiting. But this time, she wasn't alone. Her friend stood at the door now, unaware of the danger she had walked into. I screamed, slamming the book shut, my head spinning. My phone buzzed again, another text from Amy, finally moving. Should be there soon. My stomach twisted in knots. She had no idea what was coming. The book wasn't just a reflection of my life anymore, it was ahead of it. It knew what was going to happen next. And I couldn't stop it. There was no way out. The knock came again, but this time, it wasn't from the door. The knock echoed through the apartment, but it wasn't from the front door. It came from deeper inside, somewhere it had no right to come from. My stomach twisted as the sound reverberated through the walls, the same dull thud repeating, steady, rhythmic. Cold dread seized me, and my feet fell glued to the floor. The walls seemed to close in, the air heavy with something wrong. The knock repeated, louder this time, closer. It was coming from my bedroom. I grabbed the book off the floor, holding it like a shield as I slowly moved toward the hallway. Every instinct told me to run, to leave this cursed apartment and never look back, but my legs carried me forward against my will. I could feel it now, the thing inside the walls, the thing the book had unleashed. It was calling me, drawing me deeper. My hand reached for the bedroom door, trembling, the weight of my own fear pressing down on my chest. Please, I whispered to no one in particular. This isn't real. It can't be real. But it was real. I could feel it in my bones. I turned the knob and pushed the door open. The room was bathed in darkness, but there, standing in front of the mirror, was a figure, a reflection that wasn't mine. 
It looked like me at first, but the more I stared, the less human it seemed. Its eyes were hollow, black pits, its mouth twisted into a grotesque smile. Its skin hung loosely on its bones, as though it had worn my face like a mask for too long. And yet, it moved like me, its head tilting at the same angle, mirroring my every gesture with sickening precision. Stop, I whispered, backing away, but my reflection stepped forward. Its movements were jerky, unnatural, like a puppet on strings. The thing in the mirror raised its hand, and I felt a cold weight on my chest, like fingers squeezing my lungs. I gasped for air, dropping the book to the floor with a thud. And that's when I heard the voice. Soft, raspy, like dry leaves scraping against stone. You invited me in, it whispered. I am the story now. And you, you will finish it. My body froze as the words crawled over my skin. The mirror reflection began to dissolve, its form distorting, twisting until it was nothing more than a shifting shadow. It stepped out of the mirror, solid, real, its grin widening as it took shape. My shape. It was me. And it was coming closer. The bedroom door slammed shut behind me, trapping me inside with the thing wearing my face. I stumbled backward, my legs giving out as I collapsed against the wall. The book lay open on the floor, its pages fluttering as though alive. The last page was blank, but the words began to appear as I watched, forming in thick, black ink. Marin had no choice. She could only watch as the story consumed her, replacing her with the one who had waited, patiently, in the mirror all along. I screamed, but no sound came out. The shadow me loomed over me now, its hollow eyes gleaming. I reached for the book, desperate to tear it apart, to stop the story, but my hands were too weak. The thing leaned in, its breath cold against my skin. It's your turn now, it whispered. And no one will ever know. The last thing I saw was the mirror. My reflection smiled, but this time it wasn't me. Then everything went dark. Two days later, Amy stood outside my apartment, frowning as she knocked again, harder this time. She had called multiple times, left messages, but I hadn't answered. Come on, she muttered, knocking one last time before pulling out her spare key. When she opened the door, everything looked normal. My keys were on the counter, the lights off. The book sat on the armchair where I'd left it. She picked it up, flipping through the pages absent-mindedly, but then paused, her brow furrowing as she read the first line aloud, Amy stood in the living room, wondering why her friend hadn't answered the door. Amy laughed, nervous now. That's creepy. You didn't tell me you were writing. She turned the page, her fingers trembling slightly as she continued reading. The door clicked shut behind her. The End Subscribe for more true scary stories. Thanks for watching.